Saints in the nation. Junior quarterback Doug Johnson is coming off his best performance of the season. A near flawless effort two weeks ago against the Auburn Tigers. Travis McGriff continues his all-star play. McGriff and the Gators know all about the Florida-Georgia rivalry, the most storied series in Gator history. The Bulldogs are making noise this year, too, led by talented freshman quarterback Quincy Carter and the versatile Champ Bailey, a big play threat on both sides of the football. The Bulldogs are back. This is the big game of the year for the Florida Gators. Uh, what's happened in the early 90s, it seems like uh, Tennessee and FSU have become our biggest rivals. It's the game that gets the fans most excited. Uh, but personally, for me, as a guy who played here in the 60s and, and know the history of Florida football, this should be our biggest game of the year because Georgia's been a thorn in the side of the Gators uh, since we started playing way back in 1906. The rivalry is back, and the Gators are relying on their nationally ranked defense to slow down Jim Donnan's Georgia Bulldogs. It's Florida versus Georgia today at All Tell Stadium in Jacksonville. Ship series situation, which is more confusing than we have something to do right now. But Georgia kicks it off.
the Georgia 11. McCaslin, good play. Inside the Georgia 2. Jackson keeps it. trying to go over the top and he is not able to get into the end zone there. This time it is Bradley and Bradley is able to get in. Yarded. This time they'll kick it low but uh, deep and it's going to bounce up into the hands of uh, Gillespie. Robert Gillespie trying to turn the corner up the sideline a big return by the freshman from Hattiesburg Mississippi that stands under center on first down and 15. And they try to run the ball. Good toss to Travis McGriff. Football. Third down play for the Gators. Johnson throwing for Willis. Alex Willis at the 20. And then cross up the football. Then Georgia fumbles it. And the Bulldogs have it at the six-yard line. Carter throwing from the end zone. Their 23rd turnover of the year. Carter scrambling and knocked down at the, about the one. Third down and 14. Carter sets up the throw. It's tipped and almost intercepted. Westman punter went top. Kicks it out of there. And Travis McGriff from the 34-yard line. He has a chance to make a big return here, but Bulldogs close the gap in the second period. Now here's Doug Johnson. And his pass is caught by McCaskill. Oh. Eugene McCaslin. Well, Johnson's going to keep it. Slipped right inside of 21-point uh, lead. You'd be very happy as a Gator here. Almost intercepted by Kirby Smart. For the second time today. And this one, uh, I believe it is intercepted. The Bulldogs have it. Harris picked it off. Once again, Doug Johnson forcing that football into the end zone. Willis was the intended receiver, but Georgia had two or three defenders right there. Yard line. Little option type rollout for Carter. Now he fires the pass and it is caught. Ball play and a big hole for Gary. Well, for Georgia here in the second quarter. Carter's pass is overthrown. Good toss to Tony Small. Carter looking left, however, breaks away from the pressure. He's throwing for Small, and it's batted down by Granny. Well, battle that is head-to-head. -head. Carter on second down. Nice cut to the inside. Carter rolling out, third down. And the ball is tipped and incomplete. Carter's pass is caught. First down, Carter stepping up and throws a bad pass. Gators come with the blitz. Carter dumps it to Champ Bailey. And Bailey is able to wind to the right. First down for Georgia. The pass is thrown to Tony Small. And 
Hunter's got his man Small. And Small has stopped short, then the ball is fumbled. And it looks like Florida's got it. The Gators have recovered it. What a huge play by Florida's defense. It looked like they were staggering back on their heels. Georgia pushing the ball, driving it down the field. And then the Gators get a big break with a huge defensive play and a fumble recovery to take the football with 42 seconds to play in the first half. Well, I tell you what, David, you got to give Georgia credit. They did a tremendous job of setting this play up. Every time they've run this quick screen, it's been to Champ Bailey. Here they come back to Tony Smalls. They've got it set up, and Tony George comes in from the right side, left side of your screen and strips the ball out, and watch Benny Alexander get on the football. Excellent effort by Benny Alexander to come up with the recovery. And a great sporting event annually here in Jacksonville. Quincy Carter running away from the pressure. His man is open. It is small. Tony Small made a nice move to get past Rod Braddy. Carter with all day to throw, and Small is open again. Again, Tony Small making great moves, and he staggers forward to the 22 of Florida. Oh. Turns it up field. And Carter finds the open receiver. It's Michael Greer. And Carter will keep on the quarterback draw. That's Juan Manuel. Him go to the big tight end. Incomplete. Touchdown at this point. Carter's pass is it. Quincy Carter is the man holding. And Hap Hines kicks it. He missed it. Oh, it was uh, off target from the get-go. Off the foot of Hap Hines, and the kick is no good. Not been on the field since he threw the interception into the end zone midway through the second quarter. McCaslin is able to run the ball out across the 30. To Hopefully he's uh, going to be back at Florida next year. Uh, Johnson scrambling, and the screen was... And you have good success, then you stop running it. Travis McGriff. Made a great move on Cochran. McGriff has the first down. And he... Out of the eye formation. Eugene McCaslin. And snap Johnson trying to make a play out of it. And he does to Alex Willis. Okay, three catches already. This is not East Kareem. The play that Georgia has used today offensively. They've got one touchdown and one interception throw. This is Willis again, and Willis. Travis McGriff got away from the linebacker at the Georgia 7. Incomplete. Another Jack Spillion. A 25-yard field goal try is good. Trying to draw down and eight. Small. First down for the Bulldogs. Champ Bailey. The give is to Gary. The red line at 35. The tight end. Jerome or uh, rather Jermaine Wiggins. Both tight ends are on the field right now. This one is in the direction of Wiggins. Wiggins trying to... And they fumble the ball. Carter fell on it. The Gators have been very tough to score on in the fourth quarter. They've only given up seven points all year long in the final 15 minutes of uh, football this season. As Quincy Carter scrambles out of bounds and uh, steps out of bounds at the 25-yard line, allowing only uh, one touchdown. Now they say Florida has the ball. The officials have just signaled Florida football. Well, I think that was another one of those uh, freshman mistakes as Quincy Carter ran to where he saw the down markers were, not realizing that he needed to get at least another yard or two because when any time pressure or a play comes your way, as down markers, you're asked to move back or drop them. So therefore, you don't look at that. You want to get beyond those markers a yard or two. Boy, the, the Bulldogs are just shocked that they didn't get the first down, and it didn't look like Carter had enough, but 
The officials right there spotting the ball, and they measured, and Florida takes over. And Gillespie is now the tailback. And they throw the ball to Gillespie. They got a nice block from the feast Kareem. And Gillespie to the 45-yard line against a team that uh, has a good speed like Georgia defensively. Gillespie almost was capable of doing. And they keep it on the ground, and again, a good job by the offensive line. Running back, and Johnson pitches to him. Georgia gang tackles him this time. Kirby Smart got Robert there before Gillespie. anybody else. Point lead. Inside of 12 minutes to go now. Johnson, nice job scrambling. He's going to keep the football. And we're going to have a face mask call here against Jeff Harris. The gift to Robert Gillespie. Now, lock is down to four as Johnson takes the snap and gets the ball to Gillespie. Again, keep an eye out for him. Johnson pulls a, a play out of the Jim Donnan playbook with Quincy Carter. And the handoff is to the freshman. They advance that 17-point lead. The give is to Capel on the end around. He throws it back to McGriff. Doug Johnson is open at the goal line, and he pulls it in for the touchdown. <laughs> There's razzle, a, dazzle at his finest. There's a trick for you on Halloween. <laughs> there is a flag. It'll be for uh, too much celebrating, but Doug Johnson probably doesn't care too much about that right now because he just made his first touchdown reception. And That's Travis McGriff has thrown another touchdown pass, his second of the year. How good is it to have a ex-quarterback as your star receiver when you can run a reverse? Flanker around, double reverse, pass, back to the quarterback as he's wide open. And watch the short catch by Doug Johnson as he gets down to keep from being killed by Kirby Smart because he was the one that got fooled. Back for Georgia as Quincy Carter finds Champ Bailey open. <laughs> His voice sounded a little hollow. He made a great catch at the 30. Carter with the good protection. But now just a minute later there at the 20 of Florida. He wants to get to Larry Brown the ball. And Tony George has it for Florida. George stepped in front of the Georgia tight end and picked it off at the 10-yard line. Blow, and I think he got the wind knocked out of him. McCaslin is back in the ball game and... Second and nine, cut back by Gillespie. He ran right past somebody. And Gillespie finally dragged down at the 40-yard line by opening holes for Robert Gillespie. Johnson will throw this time. And up down in 19, Johnson tosses it out to Gillespie. Harris right there to greet him. throws to the tight end, Larry Brown. Oh. Well, I, I know without a doubt he could play in the NFL because of the great hands he's got. Also a pro baseball player, much like Doug Johnson for the Gators. In fact, is Georgia. He signed originally uh, for football with Georgia Tech. But the, the real deal with 221 to play. It's a jump ball and it's not caught by anybody. Carter on third down and 10. Finds Wiggins again. A throttle another drive. Boy, if they get the ball in the end zone there, it's 21 to 14 going into the locker room. And uh, the game certainly could have. They're able to convert those, those opportunities. There's a big difference in the ball game. A deflection and an interception for Manuel. And then he fumbles the ball. And I think Georgia got it. I'm telling you, that kind of play, it's more the surprise than anything else. And there's a fumble. And Tico Brown pulls the ball out of the air. Chris Terry pursuing from behind, and Brown is tackled at the seven-yard line of Georgia. Well, Tico Brown was able to grab it out of the air as uh, Jasper Sanders <laughs> came up and made the play. But uh, it is Halloween, David. And some eerie things are starting to happen. Here you got Sanks. He's going through. And the ball is popped out by, I think, 
Norwood. Lester Norwood. Warren. I think Norwood popped it out of there. Well, either way, <laughs> Tico Brown says, look what I found. Well, the, uh, the spark is back in this rivalry. Georgia got this rivalry back uh, geared up after the victory last year, but Florida has really put a whipping on the Bulldogs here in the... This football game, it is 31 to 7, Florida, with uh, just 43 seconds left of the game. Winding down at Altel Stadium, Larry Rehart, the quarterback. Florida has recovered a fumble. They are first and goal at Georgia's nine yard line. And the give is to John Capel, the speedster to the five, and he races into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. They tack on six more. It is 37 to 7 with 38 seconds to play in the football game. But did you see the speed and quickness that he hit that hole with, David? No one ever laid a hand on him because as he came around the corner, as soon as he saw daylight, he turned it up. And there was not a Georgia Bulldog to get her hand on him. Good blocking out front and just sheer speed. Beating LSU in overtime, and then they'll close out with the traditional rivalry against Georgia Tech. Patrick Pants fumbling the ball around. Second and ten. And Robert Arnott is uh, the man with the football, and the Gators slinging him around a little bit back to the 15-yard line. <laughs> A lot of second, third team uh, defenders on the field for the Gators. Gerard Warren made the tackle. And that is going to be the final play of the ball game. The Gators uh, returned to the favor from a year ago. Georgia with a 20-point win last season. And it snapped a seven-game Florida win streak in this rivalry. Well, the Gators got uh, perhaps a new winning streak going here this afternoon and evening in Jacksonville with a very impressive 38-7 victory against uh, Jim Donnan and the Georgia Bulldogs. So Florida keeps its hopes, uh, outside hopes, of another appearance in the SEC championship game alive. They're going to have to have some help from some folks. But uh, at 7-1, and one, and now with Steve Spurrier, 90 wins. The future certainly looks good, uh, even immediately, for this Florida football team. 90 wins. Uh, nobody's done it faster than Steve Spurrier. Except uh, for Barry Switzer at Oklahoma. Getting that many victories at one school. And he did it today against Georgia. Florida Gators over the Georgia Bulldogs. 38-7 is the final. And we'll be back in just a moment to Altel Stadium in Jacksonville. There you see the scene at Altel Stadium, the Florida Gators, 38-7. Coach Steve Spurrier joins me now and see maybe the most complete performance of the year for the Gators. Oh, no, I don't know, Larry. This game could have been a lot closer. If Georgia scores right four half, starts second half, heck, it's 21 all. So we're fortunate to stop them down there a couple times. And uh, they're bowling our defense a lot better than anybody, I think, all year. But uh, we got some breaks, got some things going our way. And... Uh, Heck, somehow not end up 38-7. That first quarter offense looked like the Gators of old. Well, I thought, gee, we got a chance to really play a complete game like the old days. We had 21 in the first quarter, had a chance to have 35 at half. We fumbled down here, and then Doug uh, throws an interception on a play. But uh, but anyway, but then they, they hogged the ball on us. Georgia had it about the whole second quarter and, and part, half, first half the third. Uh, but we were fortunate. We made a few plays here and there. You come in here and you say, this is the number one game on the schedule. Well, certainly it, uh, it, it, it has been historically Florida, Georgia. we got to beat them to win the SEC. I almost would rather swap this win for one last year because if we won it last year, we'd had a shot in Atlanta for another championship. I don't know if we're going to get a shot this year. But Steve, thanks. Congratulations. Good, good to beat the dogs, of course. Gator coach Steve Spurrier, the Florida Gators, 38-7 winners over the Georgia Bulldogs. Let's go back upstairs to David and Nat.